Hey everyone, welcome to this video on community aerodynamics and actually also hydrodynamics. So what we're gonna do is gonna run through some sample simulations. You have the option to create a free account at AirShaper and run a free basic simulation. Results will be public and we're gonna go through some of the coolest ones that we saw over the past week. So this is the overview. So what you see here is just a list of, in the meantime, over a thousand uh, free simulations, which you can freely access. And I just want to go over a few. For example, this one, this is a body wing, let's say, uh, or a drone, which is a combination of support arms for the propellers and a main wing, so it seems. So what you can see here is this slightly blue pattern here, which is the low pressure area. So this wing is actually generating lift um, because it's more blue than the average here, apart from this one. So here you have a local bit of speed up of the air, which creates a local bit of downforce, but on average, probably there's lift. What you can also see is that the support arms are quite thick, which means the air hits them at the front, so you get stagnation pressure here at the front, and at the top and bottom you get acceleration of the air and this creates a suction effect. Um, so this can lead to either lift or downforce or just a neutral behavior. If you look at the pressure clouds, we can see that it also leads to flow separation because this angle is actually too steep and you get flow separation, especially uh, in this area here. You can see the same here for what I believe is probably a landing gear or a camera or something like that. You also get flow separation there. So interesting design, especially interesting to see what would happen if you mounted propellers because propellers would actually pull the flow downward and change the angle of attack on the main wing. Let's have a look at this one. This is, uh, it's called Biggie Bike. Um, Let's see. So what we have here is a large windscreen in front of the rider, which helps to shield the rider. So it seems to do a pretty good job of, of shielding the rider, which means uh, the rider is completely engulfed in the wake of this windshield, apart from the head, uh, which is quite logical just to see, unless this is transparent. You see that, of course, the wheels, they generate some flow separation and so on. But overall, this, this is quite an interesting concept. Next one is a plane which seems to be made out of um, easy to make or cheap components um, so we have square cubes uh, cubes here um, we have the landing gear which is causing flow separation because the air hits it at the front so you have a high pressure buildup same at the nose here and then you get flow separation around these sharp edges if you look at the main wing you can see that this is the suction side of the wing so it's working you also see that there's slightly less suction here as you reach the tips which is normal because then you get like the wingtip vortex effect which is the high pressure air at the bottom trying to escape to the top side where it helps to reduce the suction effect which is bad because you reduce uh, you lose some of the lift here on your plane other than that you can also see that um, this one is made out of very simple shapes which means the trailing edge here is quite thick which means you get flow separation. You also get flow separation here where the uh, tail meets the uh, at the root, it meets the main um, fuselage, let's say. And at the rear, this one is chopped off, so again, this causes drag. Nevertheless, interesting concept. This one is actually a hydrodynamic simulation. So here you can see that this is basically um, probably an automated submarine or remotely operated vehicle, ROV, um, as they call it. So here you can see probably lights, a camera and so on. But you can see that the main structure is a frame and this frame creates a lot of drag. So you can see that these red pressure clouds are nearly everywhere. Um, wherever you have a sharp edge, uh, whether it's a light or a camera or anything, um, this will create flow separation. If you look at the surface friction, Blue usually means either stagnated flow at the front here or separated airflow, which is what you see here. So there's flow recirculation almost everywhere on this design. Um, so you can expect a pretty high drag coefficient. Uh, by the way, if you run a free simulation, you won't be able to see this, but we can. Um, so if you go to forces, you'll see that um, this one has uh, a drag coefficient of 1.36, which is very, very high. Uh, just as a reference, a car would be 0 0.25 or something. If you then look at this concept, um, this one I found interesting because it's basically an airfoil, uh, which is interesting. It's here to, to generate lift. Um, but you also see that if you just take a 2D profile and extrude it, you get 3D effects. For example, if you look at the um, pressure here, you see that you have a very low pressure here. And this is because the airflow actually hits the front. Uh, and then instead of just following the 2D profile, it, it likes to follow the path of least resistance, which means it just wants to tumble to the side. And as it crosses this edge, it starts to tumble, which is generating this vortex here. 
And then this vortex actually wants to cr uh, crawl back into this space because this is relatively low pressure. So the air is being sucked back inward, um, which means you have an angle of attack, a slightly inward angle of attack, which means you're crossing this sharp edge, which means in turn, you're creating flow separation on the inside of these elements, which is then um, augmented by the fact that this is still uh, a fairly blunt surface at the front. So very interesting to see. If you take a 2D profile and you make a 3D shape out of it, it will not behave like like you would expect um, a 2D airfoil to behave. You'll lose a lot of lift if you don't uh, solve these problems by adding a, a flap on the sides or by changing the aspect ratio. Then we have a nice car concept. So I like this one. Um, this one features channels um, at the front of the car uh, through which the air can travel. So the air can actually go inside here and then travel upward and around the A pillar and then meet the rest of the air at the back of the car. You see that there are also holes inside the car, so this is quite nice as well. Uh, nice blend with design, uh, with the design as well. There's a hole here to take air in, and the same here. Um, so this does remind me of, of my own concept car. I'll drop the links, uh, the link in the comments. Um, which means that you help to feed some air into the wake of the car. So if you look at the wake of the car, which is the red part you see that it's being cut out over here, which is the channel which is feeding fresh air into the wake. Um, so it's actually working uh, quite well here. Um, so interesting concept. If we then move to the next one, this is a plane. Not sure whether it was for the uh, May 4th <laughs> Star Wars Day or not. Um, it's definitely interesting to see that. Uh, we'll, we're going to ignore this because there would be a propeller in front of this, so you would still have some flow separation, but it would be different. What's interesting to see is that you have these slots probably either to mount these wings onto the fuselage or to allow for some vertical movement for flaps um, to change during landing and takeoff and so on. In any case, you can see that the air tries to fit inside and then as it hits the geometry, as it tumbles and so on, this creates flow separation as the air jumps out of this gap again. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. Uh, same at the front here, you have all kinds of geometry here which causes flow separation and anything you do to disturb the flow like, like antennas or anything else sticking out will create flow separation. The same for hinges uh, or connection points and of course at the rear you have a chopped off geometry which again uh, um, induces flow separation and drag. This one quite interesting uh, because I thought it was quite similar. It's an asymmetric design, uh, but similar to this 2D approach that we saw earlier. So here you have a large wing at the front and on one side you have an end plate which means if you look at the pressure pattern, here you can see the pressure drop off. You see, this is actually uh, a reduction in high pressure, which means it's not generating as much downforce as this side of the wing, where the pressure is maintained all the way till the end, um, because this vertical plate here, the end plate, prevents the air from spilling over to the side. Um, not perfectly, because there is some spillover still, uh, which is this vortex, so the air does still spill over. If you look at the streamlines, you'll be able to see this as well. So the air does spill over to the sides, but it has to travel upward, maintain some of the pressure compared to the other side here. So quite interesting to see this difference and the same at the rear, um, slightly less pronounced, but here you see more pressure on this right side compared to the left side. Um, then you can also see how the air needs to speed up here, which causes a low pressure area, which creates a suction effect, which creates lift, which does cancel out some of the benefits that you saw at the front wing here. So keep that in mind. If you have a wing in proximity of the bodywork, they will interact and large round curved surfaces will generate lift in the wrong area sometimes. Uh, same here, you have a very large suction effect at the bottom of the wing, which is great, but the bodywork of the car itself is right below, which means this one also feels this low pressure effect, which creates lift. So they cancel each other out to a large extent, probably. Then this car, quite interesting, race cars, we see a lot of race cars on the platform. Interesting to see because here you also have channels where the air goes through these channels and then hits the suspension um, being guided outwards uh, via this geometry behind the wheels. Um, but then again, there's a bit too much obstruction here and you do get flow separation. Um, there's a small gurney or windscreen here to kick the air slightly uh, upwards so it doesn't hit the driver's helmet full on. Um, we still do have some pressure buildup, but not much. So there's pressure buildup at this windscreen, slight bit on the helmet. 
You can see that these are, of course, free low resolution simulations, which means that you'll get some edges here where there aren't really edges in real life. So for that, of course, you can upgrade to uh, more accurate simulations. But this one is quite interesting because it does seem to manage uh, to generate quite a lot of downforce with the underfloor. So first of all, the front wing is in ground effect, so lots of downforce here. And then you have acceleration of the airflow at the bottom here. Um, there are some vortex generators here um, helping to, uh, to maintain momentum into the diffuser. So it looks quite interesting. You do have a bit of high pressure air here as well as the air hits the entry of the underfloor. So this does cancel out some of the um, downforce that is being generated. But overall, it looks like a very interesting design. And you again have channels uh, to channel air uh, all the way to the rear, which then somehow exit here um, at the rear where you have a suction effect, which helps to channel air through the car and reduce drag. This one, another completely different example. A normal car, we see a lot of car tuning on the platform, so this one actually is a normal car, um, Suzuki, and then someone added a wing on top of it. So this is quite interesting uh, because typically what you see is that the angle of attack does vary a little um, as you approach the rear wing. So some of the air will drop off to the side, some will stay high in the middle, um, which means in some cases, or in many cases, it's beneficial to change the angle of attack locally on the wing to match the airflow across the car. This is a motorbike, so here probably someone was experimenting with a windscreen. You have like a dummy element here, which is the rider, um, a dummy head and so on. There are no arms, even though the arms do represent quite a big uh, source of drag. But interesting to see how, and let's just uh, ignore the fact that the wheel is above the ground. Uh, either they wanted to simulate a wheelie or this was a mistake. But you can see that there's a lot of airflow separation already happening at the front tires and the front suspension, uh, the exposed uh, pist uh, not pistons, the exposed suspension elements here, all of those things are very exposed on mo most motorbikes. Then the air hits the radiator and then curves around via the sides across this element, which is again a disturbance causing like a, a, a drag bubble here. Um, so this is quite challenging. If you would run a proper simulation, you'd be able to set this radiator up as a real radiator and analyze the flow rates through them. That's possible with a normal air shaper account. Um, and then you'll see that all of the other elements here are also causing quite a lot of drag exposed uh, elements like the motor and so on. This one is quite interesting because it's um, a race boat in ground effect. And I wanted to show you this one because if you look at the pressure pattern, so some of the air gets almost trapped underneath the boat, which means you have a large area which is seeing a relatively high pressure, which is generating a lift force on this one. Of course, very important to not just generate lift, but also to keep the aero balance intact, which is probably why they can play with this front wing uh, to stabilize it, because you don't want this actually to flip over and uh, flip over backwards. So interesting design. If you look at some flow separation areas, this is a very clean design. It's only at the rear end that you start to see flow separation and here um, in the wake of these left and right uh, front pontoons. Then maybe a last one, another underwater uh, vehicle. What I wanted to show you here is that with the free simulation, it's not possible. Uh, you just get the drag on all of the elements. But if you were to set this up as a real simulation with a proper um, airshipper plan, then you would be able to just select the propellers and then allow our software to automatically detect the axis of rotation, after which you will be able to just set the RPM, uh, change the direction uh, as you see fit and so on. And then this will be included in the simulation. So that was it for our first video on community aerodynamics slash hydrodynamics. If you liked it, drop a comment. Please do check out the links below in the description just to find some interesting insights yourself. And if you have a cool project, just throw it on Airship, run a free simulation, and maybe we'll pick it up for our next video. Hit the subscribe button, and thanks for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.